Hey, Seth. <laughs> How you doing, man? Doing great. Practicing my uh, social distancing. Yeah, dude, this is a quality example of that. Like, <laughs> have you, how have you been handling this, this, these times? Pretty good, I think. Um, you know, it, it's, every day seems to get like a little bit harder and like that is like looming <laughs> in yeah. the background <laughs> where it's like, okay, what is going to be the breaking point here? But yeah, things are fine. Like the we weather is nice, which oh. is like the only thing that's like saving grace right now. Yeah, imagine if this was like December and this was starting. I feel like <laughs> everyone, would, be so everyone would be concerned. Like, yeah, wouldn't be able to go anywhere. Wouldn't be able to go outside. Just like be stuck inside all the time. So, so I guess I feel I feel bad for the Southern Hemisphere people. Like now's the hard time to for them to kind of deal with COVID nineteen. Yeah, for then, sure. I have the advantage of being an introvert. So like, this is like helpful for me in general. Yeah. Even though like I even intended to be. This is a normal practice. But it's, it's interesting. Weird times. This is probably like the weirdest thing that's going to happen to like us. And then it's the most unusual thing that happened, that's happened to like my parents and stuff. Like they're like, we've never had anything like this. And just yeah, strange. It's unprecedented times. for but sure. What's you drinking tonight? Or today, it's not even tonight. <laughs> First of all, <laughs> this is the Beers, B Movies, and Battle Royals podcast. I'm Nick Zamboni, and I'm Sam Collins. Welcome, episode eight. Kind of crazy. Feels like it hasn't been that many episodes, but we're like already getting in there. Yeah, we're just you know? going along. It's been. I think we uploaded our first one in November, so it's like it's been five or six months. Yeah, just we'll get some. About. We'll get some consistency eventually, but yeah, we want to keep doing this and making it fun, and we don't want to do it if it's not going to be fun. So, we want to take some of the pressure off of ourselves. But yeah, I'm glad we're able to do this. I'm. Um, I think the whole like virtual meeting style is pretty cool. I'm intrigued. Yeah, it's... ready to get moving. And then we can also do video unintentionally by just using these helpful conferencing calls this was yeah this is one of our goals so we're forced into doing that now and yeah i said i wanted to do it by episode 10 but we're at episode 8 like yeah killing it (laughs) i'm glad people can see the studio behind you (laughs) which is great it's this is to really studio (laughs) it's it's a work in progress work in progress studio yeah pretty cool plants Got Drive, great soundtrack, not really a great movie. Got Halo 3, the best game of all time. It's a pretty um, good movie. Drive is not bad. Well, I, well, sorry, let me take that back. It's not like it took me a second viewing to really enjoy the movie. But like yeah. the first li- first time I watched it, like I was like, this is the best soundtrack I've heard for a movie. Because there's not really a whole lot of talking in the movie just because it's Ryan Gosling. Like, yeah, he's just eye candy. And unfortunately... He's kind of gotten out of that role with kind of his movies with Lala Land and some of his recent adventures, but I'm glad to see that. Never he- stop being eye candy. Yeah. <laughs> when you're Ryan Gosling. Uh uh-huh. all, all right. right. Sam. I, what are you drinking? All right. I'm drinking Southern Pines. Um it is the Nov Mexican lager. You cannot see well, I think you can see that once I convert I saw this. It. But no, well, well, never mind. You can read it. That's what I meant to say. But it's Southern Pines Brewing Company, which is in Southern Pines, North Carolina. I'm all about supporting the local businesses during this time and any time, really. But it's a Mexican lager. And so far, it's pretty good. After going kind of out to the park today just to kind of get out on this beautiful day, it's really refreshing to have like a a smooth and light beer. And it just feels appropriate for the springtime and it's a lager so i mean kind of traditional and not very nothing's unique about it but it's just very refreshing <laughs> what does it taste like um i don't know <laughs> you don't know <laughs> it ta- i mean like it's it tastes more like kind of like a it's got like the the tartness kind of, and then it's it's very smooth. There's not really a whole lot of flavor, which I think is why it's a light beer. 
Uh, but I think it's the main draw to it for me, at least is kind of like, it's very refreshing. Cool. And like the taste itself isn't very prominent, but the actual drink feels enjoyable and like, feels like I need to kick my feet up a little bit. But nice. What are you drinking, like, Nick? Well, keeping within the same theme of you is like taking it easy. It's a nice summer day. So I'm keeping it basic with the natural light <laughs> strawberry <laughs> lemonade. Oh, I love it. <laughs> lemonade water. Popping back some natty lights. Takes me back to college. Yeah, man. It tastes like water and just like a hint of lemonade <laughs> and some strawberries. Have you seen that um that meme for like LaCroix? It's like gives all the flavors and it's like hint, hint of, of hint of, of lime. lime. <laughs> a subtle taste of grape. If someone shouted the name of a fruit. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Dude, I, natural lights and then like Bud Light, they're making seltzers now, which is kind of like that kind of vein of alcoholic beverage where it's like a very much, it's got some alcohol in it, but it's kind of wanting to go into a different market than their traditional beers. They're like, they're like really strong too. Their seltzers have like oh, really? a ton of alcohol. Yeah. Oh. They're like the White Claw. They're getting into the competing with White Claw. That's um, awesome. Sam, you haven't said anything about my mustache. I'm uh, rocking the mustache. I was going to bring it up. <laughs> I was just getting there. I was going to say that was like the first thing I noticed when we were like just like prepping basically. And then yep. it kind of slipped out of my mind, but I love it, man. Great, now that uh, you're kind of just at home, like you got yeah, no one. Doesn't matter. Yeah. But I, it, it does look It's fresh. a great face reveal, though. Not really. <laughs> so I know last time I saw you had the mustache, it was a little bit more prominent as far as like outward. Yeah. Uh, I assume you c- trimmed it recently. A little bit. First, okay. A little bit. But Going with the Tom Selleck look. Yeah, it's working, yeah. dude. Just got to... <laughs> <laughs> you just got to get some like chubbies and then like some Hawaiian t-shirts. So just go talk to Joey. Yikes. Well, I'm already like halfway there with the natural light. So there you go. We're going into full bro mode. Yeah, I grab, make my beer closer to me. It's, I kind of grab awesome gotta lunch. <laughs> but, okay. Right. Well, if you aren't following us on Twitter, you need to follow us on Twitter. Sam, what is our Twitter handle? Is it BBB at Nick and or at yep. BBB Nick and Sam? Correct. That's it. And please. Tweet us any suggestions you have that could be beer related or movie related, or just uh, hey, like you want to see us to check out an article or just to get to know us a little bit more. Feel free to reach out. Uh, yeah. Nick is very active on Twitter, more so than I am, but yeah. not so will... much. Uh, surprisingly, since I've been stuck at home, I thought I was going to be on social media all the time, but it's actually been the opposite of that. But oh, that's good. yeah, I need to. I need to be a little bit more active because my presence is gone at the moment. But yeah, <laughs> ask us questions on Twitter. We really, we really like engagement. So it'd be cool to answer some questions for you guys. For, for sure. sure. And I guess kind of moving towards some of you, I don't, I mean, I don't know some of our, our listeners. So I feel like it'd be helpful if we just kind of ask some questions and kind of let you get us to know us a little bit better. Um, so I have yeah. a question for Nick, actually. Um, this is inspired by Rhett and Link's Ear Biscuit podcast. So shout out to, they have a great podcast. They're very, yeah. they have, I mean, really good personalities and kind of very wholesome family content on us for the most part. And, but Nick, if you were a house, yes. what kind of house would you be? Well, it's funny because we were talking about this before we started and you mentioned, uh, bungalow was like kind of obscure but as soon as i saw bungalow i was like that's me (laughs) uh just because like first of all that's just a fun word to say and second of all like it sounds so cozy and like i'm all about comfort like i'll pick comfort over function all the time so like i love i love like comfort and function like together working in unison but I'm all about comfort. So uh, bungalow just sounds so comfy and that just speaks to me. Yeah. It gets right down into my veins. Takes you back to the camp days or 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I lived in a cabin up in the mountains. So like, I feel like that has to be said and I definitely love living in, I loved living in a cabin in the mountains. So I could go with either a cabin in the mountains or bungalow is definitely me. Yeah. I would have, yeah, I would have never have picked that for you. Honestly, I feel like, wow. I don't know. I mean, like I know you enjoy the comfortable things. You love good food and good drinks and good time with friends. But I would, I feel like I would have picked you for more of a, a practical house, like a, maybe a double wide or, no, I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it was interesting kind of reading through some types of houses. I'm, I'm just going to look at my other computer and mention just a few of them. So we got a single family home. You got a condominium apartment, bungalow. You have ranch style houses. You have cottages and cabins. Um, you got the chalets for the, the fancy people. And there's tiny homes, mobile homes. Yurt is a great word. I'm not sure exactly what a yurt is. Is it like a tent or? It's basically that... a tent. Yeah. Okay. And then got obviously the big ones like Chateau and Castle and Palace and a Villa or a Manor. Um, and then there's caves, which is also a house. <laughs> I don't know about that a cave. <laughs> I mean, it's a home. Well, maybe not a house type, but like a home. So, but for me, it took me a second to think about this, like what I would be but I think I would be like a, an A-frame house, just like, like a homely place. That's usually in the mountains. So I love the mountains, but it's like kind of like unusual in a way. And, but it's like a, an inviting type of unusual. Like when I see an A-frame house, I'm like, Oh, like that's really cool. I'm going to check it out. Like they probably have a cool loft, but it's still like <laughs> very homely and kind of, it's a kind of like a more of an intimate house. Okay. And cool. Yeah. What about a tiny home? Tiny home? Oh gosh. Could you do that? No, I could not do that. <laughs> Maybe if it's by myself, I could, but if it was with another person, I would not want to do that. I mean, I avoided dorm living for that reason. Like I love roommates and I love spending time with them, but I love having my own separate space to sleep and kind of get away from things. Yeah. That's very important to me. Cool. But, yeah, uh, please. Tweet at us if you think maybe we could be a different type of house or you can tweet at us what type of house you think you are. But yeah, that's just uh, kind of get to know us a little bit more and get to know each other a little bit more. Nice. Uh, Sam, what movie did we watch together? We watched the American Adapt- Adaptation of Death Note, which was released in 2017, I think. So like a few years ago. Yep. And... It was, I have not seen the actual Japanese TV show or the dubbed version at all, but yeah, it was like an interesting movie and kind of wasn't, was a, what it wasn't, was a, eh, sorry, excuse me. I did, was not expecting it to be anything, which I think was, it's, it's a good thing for me, honestly, but you didn't have any expectations. Yeah. Cause just cause I didn't know much about the TV show and usually if there's like an adaptation of a movie i'm usually pretty hesitant to come in with expectations yeah so watching this movie has kind of brought up a bunch of uh good talking points that we can talk about but one of those things is just uh netflix adaptations or adaptations of foreign tv or foreign films and just there's a lot of times where that has not hit the mark and has been just a flop or a bad idea or the execution hasn't been really great. Um, and I think Death Note is a really good example of that where you take a foreign idea or a foreign film or a foreign TV show that has a huge following and um, you end up turning it into something or trying to like bring it to the forefront where a bunch of people can enjoy it too. But you just like don't get the like the culture of it right or you don't hit some of the points that people like or you pick the wrong cast <laughs> like this movie did um yeah and i think death note is just a really good example of really falling flat on its face on all those examples um did you like what were your like initial thoughts when 
like what were your like first knee jerk reactions after you finished watching it? Uh, I was like, this should not be a movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it just the concept itself, just kind of where, which I think Nick will probably get into kind of a general overview, but just the, like just the idea of the movie itself where this character comes along this mystical and mythical device that summons a, is he a, a God or is he a demigod? Is that kind of, he's a demon demon. Okay. Where the, the character summons a demon. It's like, Whoa, Whoa. I have a lot of questions. Like how does this work? And kind of thing. And they yeah. talked about it a little bit, but it didn't really elaborate on it. And that's, ignoring kind of like the obvious things of hey like who's his character why why should i care about him and like why is he doing these things and that was kind of my initial thoughts of like it's like i wish maybe is either a little longer or kind of they were more intentional about like elaborating on some stuff because it was a it's a pretty big concept of a movie like and or a tv show just kind of having this mythical powers through this death note and be able to access a demon to and do whatever you want kind of or not do everything you want but kill people yeah yeah and i think you bring up a good point of something that i was going to bring up uh later is is actually a pretty short movie and it felt like they left a lot of things out or just didn't take the time to explain a lot of things um so yeah i totally agree i think there's just so many things where it's like, well, why do I care about this character? Cause there wasn't enough buildup or enough context or, you know, they didn't make him likable enough or stuff like that. Where in, cause I watched a couple episodes of the anime and that, you know, obviously a TV show is going to have more context and more story and take a lot longer to get through some of that stuff. But Hopefully. even right off the bat, they like spent the time to like, get you into it and make you like the characters or give you a reason why things are happening. And this movie doesn't really do that at all. Yeah. Um, the first scene is you, he gets a hold of the device and it's like, Oh, like I guess we're going to meet. We, yeah, we meet all the characters in the first two minutes. And, yeah. But yeah, yeah. Nick, you want to kind of go into the overview sure. a little bit? Sorry to interrupt you a little bit. Yeah, no, no, no. Great. Um, so Death Note is a 2017 Netflix adaptation of uh, the original TV show, animated TV show. Um, it's directed by Adam Wingard, who, if you have seen the movies VHS and Your Next, those are actually pretty, uh, pretty good horror movies. Um, they're pretty well known, um, and he had a he had some uh, some part in directing both of those movies. So he's a pretty good horror movie director, or he has good experience in that world. Um, and if you go in and look at all the movies that he's been a part of, they're like all horror movies. Huh. And I don't think death note really falls into that category. Um, and I think that's probably a big reason why this movie, like the, the feel of it just doesn't feel right because he's coming from a world of directing horror movies. And this isn't that genre at all. Um, it's actually like dark comedy pretty much. Uh, so I don't know. That's just one of my observations before I get into the overview. Um, okay. Yeah. So and we already talked about how it doesn't really work as a standalone experience. You kind of have to have already seen the TV show to understand what's going on because it doesn't take the time to explain anything. So anyways, uh, death note takes place in Seattle, Washington focus on, on the main character light Turner and his girlfriend, Mia Sutton, uh, the death god, Ryuk, and L, the super detective. Uh, long story short, uh, Light finds the death note in like the first two minutes of the movie, uh, which is a book that will kill anyone who, write, who you write their name in it. If you write their full name, including how they die, there are an endless number of rules that come with the book, and if you don't follow them, that can lead to some really bad circumstances. Uh, death note is the death note book is watched over by the death god Ryuk. Um, immediately after getting the death note, Light begins to write people's name um, that have done heinous crimes or are considered evil people. Um, so he's like killing bad people, and that's his rule that he only kills bad people. 
uh, Light and Mia together end up killing over 300 people, um, which is a ridiculous number of people. Um, and all uh, takes place within the span of that movie. And they expect you to believe it's been that long that they've killed like over 300 people. Yeah. And the first scene is um, Mia and uh, Light meet up. Uh, Mia's a cheerleader and like she's kind of hanging out outside enjoying the weather and then they kind of you know smile at each other and then two minutes later uh, uh, basically Light finds this the death note and then he connects with Mia and then immediately shows her hey I have this <laughs> ability to kill, kill people and then Mia yeah. who literally just met Light is like oh man I want a part of this like yeah we should start killing people yeah exactly <laughs> and uh sorry go ahead it's like that was like the first like kind of like oh like oh it's gonna be this type of movie just kind of rushing in and like having this character who like it's a new boyfriend girlfriend relationship and they're already wanting to kill people together and and basically kind of from the start it kind of portrays light as this kind of like intellectual and very smart and like really well thought and yeah he's supposed to be a genius yeah in the tv show and in the movie and like the movie does i feel like the movie does a pretty good job of kind of like showing that he's calculated and like wants to think about like kind of what he's doing and if it's right or wrong and because he was very hesitant to even use the book at all and kind of ryuk the demon who is um i guess like what i want like a question i thought would be like is Ryuk in charge of the Death Note or is the Death Note in charge of Ryuk? Like, that was like one of my questions that I kind of had during the movie. And Great question. That's probably something that the TV show answers probably. to some degree. But if I like had to take a swing at that, I would say Ryuk is in charge of the Death Note. But there's some loopholes yeah, that think- could switch that around. Yeah, it's kind of like... Um- like Ryuk is like that's kind of how I like thought he was in control, and he's like kind of giving his power away through the Death Note, and then having some guidelines, so he's in control still of the Death Note. But I thought it was interesting, kind of thinking about it from the other perspective of like, if the Death Note is in charge of Ryuk, like Ryuk doesn't have a job if he doesn't have the Death Note out. So like, yeah, basically like Ryuk is useless unless someone has the Death Note, and like that's kind of how I thought about kind of if the death note was like in charge of Ryuk and like yeah. I was thinking about that the whole time I was watching it yeah I think it's probably like a lot more complicated than all that and there's a lot of back and forth probably a lot of I mean because the book has all these rules and so there's probably like a little bit of both in a lot of situations where it's like Ryuk's kind of masterminding situations but also the book is like without the book Nothing, none of this would be possible. So I don't know. Yeah. It's a good question. The book's kind probably of like the a TV show answers yeah. that. Yeah, I guess the book's kind of like a facilitator in a way. But I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so, uh, anyways, they end up killing over 300 people. Uh, and just to back up a little bit, the whole thing that gets him into killing people is his dad is a detective, I think, in. Uh, yes, yes. the police force and the guy that murdered his mother got away mm-hmm. is that okay and his dad was supposed to be a part of the investigation and they didn't end up getting to the point of incriminating the guy or finding him guilty and so basically the murderer got away mm-hmm. and that's the first person he kills is the guy that murdered his mother Um, And so after that, that's just like a slippery slope and he starts murdering all these people that are dumb bad things. Um, So they end up killing all these people and he starts leaving calling signs um, and he gets like a cult following under the pseudonym Kira, which is a Japanese name. Um, And there's a super detective. Uh, I honestly can't remember. But it is basically, <laughs> and we'll, I'm going to get into this in a second, but the whole card thing is like a big problem with the story. But anyways, 
the international detective L starts to investigate. Um, and he comes to America and starts looking into the murders and he starts to put all the pieces together. Um, and then come to find out Mia, his girlfriend is like really crazy and starts to become yes. super unhinged and lights. Dad starts to get closer to the truth. And she tries to kill lights. Dad by writing his name in the book. And he has to like stop her from doing that. Um, and then Mia eventually reveals that she wants possession of the death note and she wants light to give him, give her possession of the death note. Um, and basically to make a long and complicated story short, L ends up finding out that light is the killer. He confronts him and light finds out Mia wrote his own name in the death note as an ultimatum for him to hand over soul power to her. Um, in really dramatic, in a really dramatic ending, Light and Mia are on the top of a Ferris wheel, and that's where we find out Light actually wrote an entire end game sequence in the book, where Mia would fall and die, and the page would get ripped out of his, uh, the page with his name would get ripped out of the book, fall into a fire and burned up, which is one of the rules. If you tear out a page and burn it in a fire, that person doesn't die, and. <laughs> It's just this whole sequence where he masterminded this series of events where he ends up getting cleared and no one can charge him with any of the murders. And the detective L gets discredited because he becomes super unstable and insane, ending with light ultimately retaining possession of the death note. Um, and I kept, there's so much to the story. A oh, lot yeah. happens. It is very complicated. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's so complicated that it's just not believable at all, which one of the premises of the book is the deaths and the circumstances have to be believable and, or they have to be actually possible. Mm -hmm. And that whole last ending sequence where they're falling off the Ferris wheel is just, not breaks possible. that rule. Yeah, it's not possible at all. Like they break, they break their own rules constantly mm -hmm. throughout the movie. Um, so it's just it. It does such a bad job of explaining things, and so because of that, nothing really makes sense. And there's just so many pieces to the puzzle that aren't filled in to where you just walk. You just like at the end of the movie, you're just like, "What the hell did I just watch?" That doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah. Um, yeah, but Lakeith Stanfield, who plays L, the detective, he's in Short Term 12, Selma, Dope, Get Out, Uncut mm -hmm. Gems, he's <laughs> Knives in. Out, and Atlanta. He's in a lot of stuff. I, I right really now. liked him in this movie. Yeah. Um, and Willem Dafoe is uh, Ryuk, and Willem Dafoe is always fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, but apart from those two actors, the rest of the cast is just not really that great i think the guy that plays light was just not a really good pick um and i think it just when you put all those pieces together they just didn't work um yeah. yeah the whole movie kind of from the start it kind of set itself up for kind of failure like like you said it's a very complicated movie to begin with like it's a very complicated tv show and it basically set itself up so that like they were going to have to break some of the rules to kind of have a story and to kind of have some drama. Um, I think like kind of having like the time, time constraints of like a movie was like probably like a bad thing for just kind of like making an adaptation. And yeah. basically, I mean, for me, it's like all the characters, like I wanted to like them at first and I really liked Elle's character to start out with. He was playing the kind of the super detective and I'm already biased because I love like Stanfield. He's a great actor. Um, but like just kind of like his, his drive wasn't really elaborated on. Uh, they talked yeah. about a little bit kind of him growing up being trained to be a detective. But I remember the first scene where L and White meet up for the first time, which is 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 his name Light in um the movie or is that the TV show? I believe his name is Light in the movie. Okay, yeah. I thought it was something different. But or TV show, yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, I can look it up. But the first like so, L's been hunting down 
this mysterious Kira character. And he kind of figures out that he's in Seattle and they don't really, he talks, but he explains it and I could not get the justice how he explains it, but he basically figures out like, Hey, this isn't this international um, serial killer. It's a, um, it's local. He basically re- finds the source of the, the murder oh, yeah. and he's like, Hey, it's gotta be here. <laughs> and you're like, wait, yeah, what? It's- <laughs> yeah so i found my note about kira um he names himself kira because it means killer in japanese and so all of the police department is like oh it's someone from japan <laughs> like it has to be someone from japan and l is just like well what if it's someone here and they're just using an alias and everyone's like what, what? <laughs> and it's like that's so obvious <laughs> and that's their that's their whole reason for investigating light that's L's whole reason for investigating light is just because he thinks Kira is an alias. Like he has no other reason to think that than just, Oh, it's my hunch that that's an alias. And that's like detective one oh one. It's kind of like, don't just like, <laughs> don't go with the obvious. Like if oh, there's this weird name, Oh, let's uh, make it. He's yeah. It's a Japanese word. So therefore he's Japanese. Well, the name yeah. means killer. So, Obviously, it's an alias <laughs> and is used to being thrown someone like to throw someone off. Yeah, but like okay. The, so in the TV show, his name is Light Yagami instead of Light Turner, but his okay. name is oh Turner. That's what it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but basically, so L has been hunting down Light or who he knew as Kira, and they finally come to a point where they meet up. And the first thing that happens is. Uh, I guess L or L remember or knows Light's name just through being in contact with this. So once L goes into Seattle and finds the killer's probably in Seattle, he connects with the detective who is Light Turner's dad, and he immediately he's like, um, "I'm not going to rule any suspects." So like, I think your son might be a suspect, and it's like, okay, like seems seems fair. Um, yeah, and then they meet up, and then. L start, immediately starts accusing Light. Is like, hey, I think you're the, I think you're the killer. Yeah. And I, I like watched a little bit about to kind of understand the TV show. And apparently, basically, L in the TV show, he was very kind of like, he wasn't sure about stuff. And as a right. te- detective, you kind of just want to leave everything in the open and kind of let the the pieces and clues kind of fill in the the gaps of your knowledge. And like. I like was reading that like L in the TV show. He's like very much like, I think it could be you light, but like, I'm only like yeah. 5% sure. And then the first interaction they have, I was like, I'm like a hundred percent certain it's you light. And there's this big dramatic kind of coffee interaction where hell is doing his weird sitting position. And yeah, they're both, both accusing each other and like, no, I'm not it. Like you, you don't know anything. Like, yeah, and then Light threatens L. Actually, it's like, well, you just gave yourself away, man. Like, yeah, he good job. He goes from he doesn't like really even try to deny it that hard, and then he breaks immediately and just like straight up threatens him, confirming that he is the killer when he could have just kept denying it because Light had no proof at all, or yeah. L had no proof. Yeah, and that's kind of when the the show kind of ramps up and speeds up. Like after this the light becomes a little bit more hesitant with killing people. And then they kind of go to this kind of duel of light versus L. And I remember the, towards the end of the movie, there was like a chase scene where L is chasing down light. And it's probably like a five minute. It's a long chase scene, way too long. It felt like the, what's that? What was that bird movie that we watched? I can't remember. Birdemic. Bird it felt like Birdemic, where it's like this unnecessarily long sequence, which yeah. was a chase scene. And like there wasn't really anything cool that happened during that chase scene. It was just kind of like yeah. this is way too long. And if you if you go back and look at it, you can notice that like both Light and L are going out of their way to knock things off tables. And <laughs> like it makes it makes perfect sense for Light to like knock things down to get mm-hmm. in L's way while he's chasing him, but L also like wreaks havoc everywhere he goes while he's chasing light down hallways and stuff. And it, it only slows him down. 
it's like the directors just told the actors just make as big of a mess as you possibly can and also at the same time light's dad is like kind of concerned about his partner l and he's like hey um if you guys see l or this kira character yeah. <laughs> please just keep them where they're at and we can like figure it out but no the the, the cops aren't gonna do that they're gonna keep chasing them and keep following them and not follow protocol and kind of just just to be a little bit more dramatic and yeah. the whole last the last 20 minutes of the movie is just like this is so ridiculous like wh- what am i watching like the whole movie is kind of ridiculous but at the end it kind of, it ramps up very quickly well and, yeah af- after uh elk confronts light everything falls apart pretty much and you realize the whole story is on a house of cards where the movie just makes a ton of assumptions and a ton of it breaks a ton of its own rules and you find out that all these things happened and it's basically one of those situations where you know if you're reading a book or you have a movie where the narrator person telling the story is not a reliable source but you just find out that nothing that you watched in the movie the movie is lying to you outright and just saying well i'm just not going to tell you anything and so the ending will just be so mind-blowing because you don't know anything about the story Mm -hmm. and that's that's a problem because this movie slash the tv show depends on the story it depends on telling you things and giving you context and revealing things at a timely manner but this movie just holds out all the information until the very end that is necessary to where you're just like this doesn't work and it it makes the it makes the ending so much more ridiculous because it sets in place all these rules and all these things that you have to follow and it just breaks them all and it is just not believable at all and that was probably my biggest frustration with it is just so everything i just watched was a lie <laughs> and normal like you can do that in a movie and it can work but in this case it just didn't work because yeah. it depended so much on that um And like a good example is where one of the rules, and we already talked about it a little bit, but the rule states that the deaths have to be physically possible. And that whole Ferris wheel scene at the end is just not possible. And it defies the laws of physics. It defies the laws of the death note. Probability. Yeah. And like light uh, takes control of all these people by writing their names in the book and how they're going to die. And it just it's so complicated and doesn't make any sense when you actually dig into the information if you just watch the movie and let it happen to you you probably won't really care all that much but if you're actually watching it with a discerning mind it is frustrating Mm -hmm. for sure yeah i like thinking of them i was trying to think about some like good things about the movie and i honestly couldn't think of any yeah like even like William yeah. Defoe or Willem Defoe, like I didn't really think they really elaborated on his root root character at all. I'm like he's he's barely in the movie, and he's probably like one of the most compelling parts of the movie, and he's barely in it. So mm-hmm. that's like another thing. You should you have like your big ticket actor? He should be in the movie a yeah. lot, and he should be a protagonist because he's the demon. Yeah, but he's just like kind of in the background the whole time. Yeah. I I don't suggest you watch this. Normally no. we watch movies and we're like, okay, you got to watch this because it's so bad that it's just enjoyable. This is one of those movies that's just not enjoyable. Like it's bad mm-hmm. and it's bad. There's no, <laughs> there's no like, okay, we're going to watch it and make fun of it. It's just, it's not one of those movies where you can sit down, watch it with friends and laugh at how bad it is. It's, it just is kind of a waste of time. So I don't recommend anybody to watch it. And <laughs> we watched it for you so that you don't have to. Yeah. If you really want to, if, if you really want a good laugh, go watch cinema sins, a review of the movie on YouTube. It's pretty good. And It'll, if the concept of the TV show sounds interesting, just watch the anime death note. Yeah. And cause it's yeah, on that's your thing for sure. Cool. Glad we're done with death. Note. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, definitely just, an F tier movie for me. Like, like I F-tier. think, it, yeah, in every single capacity. Like, I wouldn't recommend it to someone. I didn't enjoy it. It didn't make sense. Not, there was nothing really I could take out of it, honestly. Yeah, and, I got to agree. F tier. Which I wasn't expecting to. I thought I was at least going to enjoy the movie, but I didn't at all. That's three movies in a row. We're on the same page. 
dude sweet awesome um, all right you want to move on uh yeah i'm kind of uh, yeah i was dreading talking about death note because it was such <laughs> a bad movie <laughs> yeah but there right, is a well, lot of things to talk about with that just there's a lot of yeah. kind of themes and i think they're kind of cool and i i think it like with some of the themes it might i can probably talk about that and then another segment of it but what do you have for this nick right now all right it's time to do my favorite part of the podcast. Everything is <laughs> awful. Where I find awful things on Reddit and tell them to Sam to get his reactions. <laughs> um, if you aren't on Reddit and you don't go look at the everything is awful subreddit, then good for you. You have been <laughs> saved. Um, but I, I scour Reddit and the internet for things that are cringy or can get a really great reaction out of Sam. All right. So I'll start off with something easy. Okay. How about a wedding dress? What, what's your question? How, how many of these you got? I have five. Okay. Just preparing myself. <laughs> um, all right. A wedding dress made of pizza. What are your thoughts? Very greasy, but greasy. I, can be, I can be about that. Honestly, like, yeah, it's like, then you like you have a snack afterwards. I don't know if you'd want to eat it. But <laughs> maybe pizza part of it, but I feel like that could work. And like, would it be actual pizza or would it be like pizza well, so, colored cloth? So the picture I found was pizza colored cloth. But oh yeah, screw I, that then. I feel like you could take it a step further and just make it out of pizza. That'd be hard to get into. Like, you you, you like ruin the pizza and like break it up, but. I'd be you can about eat that. yourself out of it though. Yeah. Eat yourself out of it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That would be disgusting after about two minutes. <laughs> uh, think of the combination of like sweat and grease. Oh. And, like, you know, pepperonis. Gosh. All right. Bicep implants. Have you ever seen those? That sounds very, oh my, that sounds so painful. Like my biceps hurt thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> Have uh-huh. you seen the people that do like extreme implant surgeries where like they'll supersize their biceps or like their chest or their butts or I mean like weird butts parts believable, of their but like a, a practical thing like a like a bicep I feel like that would probably do more damage for you than actually yeah. like help out and like be aesthetically pleasing yeah I feel like you end up becoming a monster when you yeah. enlarging Frankenstein. parts of your body okay uh People that are licking or eating things in the grocery store and then putting them back. Especially <laughs> right in now. today's climate. Dude, have you I, seen the have you seen the like stories of people getting arrested for it? No. I mean yeah. I heard about the ice cream, like I think that was in Guilford County. Like apparently someone was opening up ice cream bins and taking a bite out of them or like licking them and he got caught, he or she got caught. And was, I don't know if they were put in prison or just fined like a couple thousand dollars. But this was like six to months to a year old ago. But is there something that recently had that happened or? Yeah. Um, I think that happened to someone else that was licking ice cream, got arrested. There was someone who was like sneezing on stuff and they got in a lot of trouble. Um, and just like people ruining, uh, stock or items in the grocery store that have gotten arrested for it and put in prison uh, for a short amount of time and it's justice served for sure and just people that do that need a good wake-up call yeah and during this prison time is a good place for that yeah they can't touch you can't touch anything in prison but i feel like Things now you. yeah there's like <laughs> now when i was i was going to um total wine today and like even just like touching the beers i felt like I was not helping with the whole COVID-19. Like I felt, I probably, I remember I touched, I touched the beer just to look at it. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't, I probably shouldn't be doing this. Like yeah. someone else could touch this. And yeah, I just felt like I was a bit more like walking on eggshells wherever yeah. I go. You got to be careful about what you do and what you touch. And, you know, like I, I have touched my face a lot and like, I try to be conscious of that, but it's really difficult. Like yeah, it's, I've it's already touched my face like 20 times since I sat down. <laughs> so, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Peeps flavored coffee creamer. 
Um, do you like it, Peeps? Not really, but I feel like it could be about <laughs> Peeps flavor coffee creamer. Like, yeah, like I feel like, like that's a fifty fifty one. Because like, depending on who you ask, I don't really like creamer. If, but if I'm gonna do it, like it's probably bad coffee and just needs like a ton of flavor. And with Peeps coffee creamer, that'd be a lot of flavor and a lot of sugar. I think that would actually I think that would work for like a coffee creamer. Like honestly, I'd I'd want to try that. Okay. Well, you should try it. Is it actually a thing? Know. It's a real thing. What? Yes. Oh my gosh, yeah. I'm about to add this to my <laughs> I'm buying it for myself. <laughs> All right. Last one. This one's okay. a doozy. Uh tail plugs, butt plugs for pets that are bejeweled. <laughs> oh man that's animal abuse yeah you think so yeah that's that's definitely animal abuse you should never be allowed to stick things up no animal spots even if they're sparkly people like uh put them up their cat's butts so they don't have to stare at uh, a butthole pretty much oh my gosh that's cool people people should not should not be alive if they're doing that sorry guys (laughs) oh bold statement from sam (laughs) <laughs> death, death to everyone that abuses animals yeah the, that was a drink uh, let me i'm gonna make myself i'm gonna do this for you nick, next week nick so is it just r r or slash r everything is awful uh awful everything okay yeah. awful everything but be careful there's some pretty oh that, i mean that's a that's about as uh light as it tame. gets on that subreddit so maybe I have to do some searching <laughs> yeah maybe go somewhere a little less uh aggressive gotcha. um all right let's move on sam you have a lot, lot of stuff here uh what kind of games are you playing right now or what game or entertainment news you got for us um so they announced the specs for the ps5 and xbox and like i was like kind of excited for that but then i saw a meme and so one of the big draws of the new xbox and then i, I think it's called the xbox series x which sounds yeah. like it's the next version of xbox one Right, um, but it's a new it's a new console, and then there's the PS5, but they announced like, hey, like instead of hard drives, we're gonna have solid state drives. And then I saw this picture, and then there's like this guy, he's like, well, console players, welcome to 2010, and he's just kind of talking about like, oh, like SS, like solid state drives, they've been around yeah. and popular for over 10 years, and just now getting around to it. Yeah, it's like oh, a little, little slow. I don't think I'm going to get the new Xbox or PS5. Um, it just seems like kind of like a waste of time and money. Other than well, maybe- I, I had also heard that almost all the first year games for the new Xbox and PlayStation are going to be backwards compatible yeah. with the X, like the current systems. So from like, I agree with you. So from like, what incentive do I have to buy the new system if, everything's going to be available for the system I have now. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, I'm more kind of hopeful for PC gaming and I've been trying to get more into that. Um, yeah. I built a computer maybe like six months ago and like, I feel like right now I'm actually starting to use it. Um, i had been playing a lot of Counter-Strike Global Offensive just to kind of get my, get familiar with the mouse and keyboard because um, this game that was announced, I guess it was announced like a month and a half ago um it's riots like tactical shooter and it's called valorant and they they done a little bit of gameplay but yesterday they had a live stream where they'd give some beta keys to some prominent streamers and kind of just showcase the game and it's basically counter-strike meets overwatch which like that even just like thinking about that sounds really cool you got like the tactical like i need to be precise and then smart about everything i do I love that part of Counter-Strike. And then you have the Overwatch where it's kind of like you have this unique character who has unique abilities and it kind of changes how you play the game. And like combining those two just seemed right. One thing that I don't like about Counter-Strike is there's kind of like this this system of like economy that's like kind of complicated, but <laughs> it's very it's, complicated. It's so it's there's two reasons I don't like Counter-Strike. One it's so try hard <laughs> to yeah. that whole economy thing makes no sense to me and seems so arbitrary 
and I just hate everything about it. Yeah, that's um, like, I mean, that's been like hard for me because like I'm not really familiar with Counter Strike and I'm not very familiar with mouse and keyboard. So like playing Counter Strike now is very difficult because everyone is nasty because either they've mm -hmm. been playing it for 15, 20 years or because they've been playing Counter Strike Source, Counter Strike. They're all Blue hooked up on Adderall sitting in yeah. the basement. Or like they're just disgusting at using the mouse and keyboard and I'm not from like even like yeah i'm not very good with mouse and keyboard basically just because i'm used to like using controller but i kind of like just practicing on that just to kind of at least like get my be a bit be, be better at aiming so that when valorant either i get a beta key or when it comes out like i'll be a little bit more prepared yeah. but like i was watching some streams yesterday and i watched some videos today and i'm really excited the map, the one map that they're showcasing looks great. Um, the characters look awesome. Like I can see myself enjoying each one of them in their own way. And like, that's kind of what I want. And I'm kind of really intrigued by this idea of like having characters that are, have their own abilities. Like we've seen that kind of evolve um, throughout the years, like the game Shadowrun, which came out for the Xbox 360 and PC. I think it was like, 2007 where you pick a character and he has these unique abilities and then you kind of have this tacticalness of it and then you kind of see that again with league of legends and dota where you have these characters with abilities and you work together to win the game and then we're kind of coming back to kind of abilities and characters being a prominent thing with like overwatch and rainbow six siege and now valorant where you have these shooters which you have this unique story of this character, but also you have these like cool abilities that like differentiate yourself from other players, but it's also familiar because usually you play every character and kind of learn them, but I'm really excited. Um, it looks tactical and looks very challenging and there's a, looks like there's a high skill gap and I'm really pumped to play Valorant. I did not get a beta key yesterday, but apparently I'll get another chance on, monday and You're then not famous enough yeah i'm not famous enough i'm not quick in the draw they have like i can't i didn't really i started watching streams kind of after all the keys were given away but like basically you just get like a drop and i don't know how you get the drop i need to find that out before monday but it seems like a really cool concept of a game and i'm really excited about it but i've been playing Ooh. a lot of counter strike lately or i've been trying to play counter strike <laughs> I think that's the key word there. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, so I've been, uh, my wife and I got Animal Crossing New Horizon for the Switch, and I've just been playing an ungodly amount of Animal Crossing. Um, As with everyone else, basically. Yeah. The whole world loves Animal Crossing. Uh, but it is such a good game. Man, I can't say enough good things about it. Um, just it's like nostalgia all over again, but also it's a new game and that's a really hard combination to pull off. Um, where you have a new game that is riding off of the success of an old game and is just as good, if not better. Um, I mean, people could probably argue that it's, you know, terrible or they didn't do it justice, but, um, as an animal crossing fan, I, I love it. It's really, really cool. Um, so the one complaint that I do have of this game, and it's a complaint that has been around since the time of Animal Crossing, uh, that if you uh, you can only have one player per console, but you can have two players in the sense where, so whatever player starts the map, they're the only player that can progress this main storyline. But you mm -hmm. can have like two characters on one map, but the other character can do like side stuff and build their own home and do all this like make money and do all the other things that a regular like the huh. first player can do but they can't like build the new buildings or uh progress the story at all and that seems a little frustrating to where it's like it's supposed to be a family oriented game where everyone chips in and like does teamwork and stuff but they don't let all the players participate in all the stuff and so and you can only have one copy per switch pretty uh, much so it's like 
you'd have to buy another switch to like have your own experience where you get to control everything that's going on. And so that just seems a little frustrating and that's been a problem since the last game. Um, so the fact that they haven't changed that is a little frustrating because, you know, Nintendo is pretty well known for being stingy. Like they don't put their games on sale very often. If there's an exploit that needs to be patched, they patch it very quickly. So people can't like beat the game and like ruin their games pretty much. And so that's just, you know, the ugly that comes with the good of Nintendo is they're really on top of things and have really strict rules sometimes, but you know, it's still a great game. I really love those economy based games where, you know, like Sunday is when turn the turnip lady comes. I'm going to buy as many freaking turnips as I can and sell them for a profit of that kind of stuff. So, um, so great you don't game. like competitive economy games, but you like, or like, yeah, you, you you said earlier you don't like economy games, but now you're saying you do like the economy. No, I don't like CS:GO's economy. Okay, that's different. I don't like their economy. I think it's weird and aggressive. <laughs> Mainly, uh, the big reason I don't like CS:GO is because of the the community is try hard. try hard and toxic. So, I mean, yeah. you can say that about most most FPS uh, communities are like that, but just CSGO is not my jam. So, um, also been playing a ton of Subnautica, which I don't know if you've played that, Sam, but it's free game pass. And I've heard good things. Is that the one yeah. where you're stuck on, stuck in the ocean? Yeah. Basically everything takes place underwater. Not everything, okay. but most of, most of your exploration stuff is underwater. It starts off like, if you don't know what Subnautica is about and you start playing it, you're going to be in for a rude awakening just because it's, it, it sells itself to you as this like really like beautiful and like peaceful game. And then as soon as you go underwater, it's like everything's trying to kill you and there's demons and monsters and aliens that are underwater, just like real life, (laughs) you know, pretty much. Um, And just kind of like goes, it's like the whole theory about, or like what people say about, we don't know everything there is to know about what's under the ocean. Gotcha. yeah, it's it's a really fun game. I really like it. It it strikes a good balance between scary and Minecraft. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's like really a really beautiful game. Um, yeah, it is kind of it. it is kind of frustrating how everything takes place underwater. But if once you get used to it, it's just normal. Um, so yeah, it's a really really good game. Subnautica and Animal Crossing New Horizons highly suggest. Think- Subnautica is free on Epic Game Store, so I might need to download. I'm, I looked up. Yeah, there's um a game that's like free right now. It's called Gone Home. It's kind of like a a mystery detective type of game, and I'm probably gonna try and play that with the the roommates. Which actually, Tom's moved in now, so it's four of us, and we've been watching him play God of War slash Backseat Gaming a lot. <laughs> nice. And God of War God, is a great game. Yeah, it's really really interesting, and I'm really excited to for us to play it together tonight, but I'm probably going to try and get him to play gone home. I'm going to get Tom back on the podcast. Yeah, we do. We're just going to watch a movie together again. All right. We got some Twitter questions slash questions given to us. Yep. All right. Our first question is by our listener, Raph. Uh, After seeing this movie talking about uh, death note, do you think the, that deep remakes or adaptations of non-American material are better off as TV shows instead of movies. I'm yet to be convinced if you get Hollywood best director, he or she can deliver a good movie. Uh, and he says the girl with the dragon tattoo is an exception, which I would, I would agree with that. Um, mm-hmm. I think girl with dragon tattoo is both a very successful movie and very good TV show as well. Um, both adaptations on uh, foreign material, which is, pretty rare we we found out when we were trying to research this question yeah um so what are your like initial thoughts sam uh yeah it's a it's a good question but it's a very hard question um i'm not really familiar other than the girl with the dragon tattoo with tv shows being adapted over to american film but what came to mind for me was kind of the japanese movie um seven samurai and how that's been adapted to the magnus the magnificent seven and then that's been remade, I guess, like a year or two ago. And 
just kind of you had this kind of like cult classic of a TV show or a movie that has a lot of impact on kind of like the Seven Samurai. That's a that's like if you talk to anyone who knows anything about film, like it's a good example of like, hey, this is a good story, and it kind of did some pretty unique things for. It, I think it was released in the forties and fifties, and like they had some really good sim- cinematography and kind of some unique yeah. storytelling and like really impacted kind of what happened after that and just kind of looking into kind of some other movies. Uh, I saw there's a, apparently I did not know this, but the sound of music was a, a German film before it was an American film. Um, it's called uh, Josh, please forgive me, but D trap for fam- family. Um, I was like, Oh, like makes sense. That'd be a German movie. Um, yeah. but yeah, I had a really hard time just kind of thinking about adaptations and yeah, the girl with the dragon tattoo is kind of like, it's like the first thing you think of when you think yeah. of that kind of thing. I'm going to, I'm going to change the question a little bit, um, okay. to just, you know, what are some remakes or adaptations that have been successful or that are from TV to movie or TV to TV or vice versa, um, just to make it a little bit easier to answer. But you know, movies that I were was when I first saw this question, movies I thought off the uh, top of my head were The Departed is um, from a TV show adaptation. Granted, not all of these are from foreign material. So, mm-hmm. and I think there is actually something to be said about that. I think it's, I think it is extremely difficult to take foreign material and add it, adapt it over into mm-hmm. American TV or an American movie. I think that is much more difficult. And I think if you go research this question, I think it's a great question, Ralph. Yeah, it's great. That it, it is actually really hard to find good examples of this. Um, but if you make the question a little bit easier to answer, what are some adaptations regardless of what material they come from? Um, movies like The Departed, Mission Impossible, and The Fugitive, those are all movies that have been adapted from TV shows or movies or um, other material or even books. Um, they're super successful. A good example of a, a Japanese uh, material was Alita Battle Angel, which I don't know if you could say it's like a really great movie, but it was a pretty successful movie um, and got you know some decent reviews. And that was an adaptation from a Japanese TV show, I think. Um, so, but I mean, obviously you have your classics, like the office was an adaptation from British Mm -hmm. television, but I think that's so much easier. You know, you can find a lot of examples of British TV. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar cultures, but the jokes are obviously a lot different and some of the references are going to be a lot different. Um, but even if, you know, that's one of those rare circumstances where it's like, even if you aren't British or from the UK, Okay, you still thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, that's that's a really hard balance to strike. And I think if you start seeing movies like that, um, you know, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo is a really good example. I think there's something, I think you should give that even more praise when you see that kind of thing happen. And, you know, Death Note is a really good example of what can go wrong <laughs> when you try to do that. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's a great question. Good one. Uh, now that you kind of chase the, change the question a little bit i mean there's like parent trap which is a great remake freaky friday another great remake <laughs> wow um, you're really taking it back dude, to the 2000s yeah dude those are i mean like i kind of i mean kind of was like growing up like i had a sister and like i like those kind of movies anyways and like they were good and then like i didn't watch the original but i watched the original after kind of watching those two movies and like those are the two that kind of come to mind and I mean, I really like the parent trap that that's a, just a classic of a movie. Freaky Friday, yeah. not that great, but I mean, also you can like think of, I guess like Peter Pan a little bit, um, like where you had hook and kind of, and then they remade it as a, well, they didn't remake it as a Disney movie, but just kind of like a different adaptation of it. Yeah. I think you can find a lot of good examples. If you change that question around, um, it makes yeah, I, but I think that's the point of Ralph's question is it makes it really obvious when you see uh, an adaptation coming from a foreign TV show or foreign film that it is even more of an important piece of work. Um, so, yeah, good question. Uh, all right, 
Sam. Next question from our friend Alex. Thank uh, you, Alex. <laughs> how have you been staying busy during COVID nineteen social distancing? Uh, hanging out with the roommates a lot. Uh, that's been the main thing. But um, luckily, I've been blessed with the job that I'm able to work from home and. It's a little bit inconvenient, but in some ways it's more convenient to work from home. Um, so that's like, a, I still have a job and kind of still working. I probably, I've had, I mean, I definitely will have a hard time not working more because it's very easier to work more when you're working from home because there's not that separation of work and home. And like, but other than kind of working and hanging out with roommates, I've been trying to, honestly, like I've been going outside more and exercising more, which has been great. And those are like the three main ways. And then I've kind of gotten back into gaming a little bit. So I feel like, I mean, I hate to say this and I feel really weird saying this, but COVID-19 for me has been like kind of, I feel like a healthy kind of reminder of that. It's like, Hey, like just need to do stuff and set some routines and kind of that, that do that kind of stuff. Cause it's really yeah. important. I, I don't think it's wrong to say that this should be used as this should be used as a time to better yourself. And if you are, uh, you know, put out, um, by your employer, or if you're put in a, a really difficult situation, or if you're forced to be at home, this should definitely be a time where people are trying to better themselves, whether it be emotionally, mentally, or physically. And that's one of the things that I've been thinking about a lot is, you know, I've been blessed to be able to work up until this past Friday and work remotely for a little bit. And I'll be half, I'll have to take some time off from now until mid April, um, which is okay, but it's obviously not an easy situation mm -hmm. for me. Um, and you know, that's going to be difficult, but um, you know, and not everyone is in an equal situation. And I've seen a lot of people post about that where, you know, they're hesitant to, you know, complain about their problems or talk about how that, what experiences they're going through. Everyone's experience is valid and everyone should be, mm -hmm. you know, feel free to talk about their experience. Mm -hmm. um, Great point. You know, cause you know, this is an indiscriminate situation. Like everyone's affected no matter who you are and some are better off than others. Um, but I think that, you know, if you are able to, it's a time where, people should look to better themselves. You have to do that unless you want to go crazy. And, you know, that's been one of the themes for me is I've been out running, been doing things outside, um, obviously not with other people, but just trying to spend time getting back into things that I like doing that kind of shaped me into who I am and just continue to do that so that one day when things get back to normal, I'll come out in the better. Mm -hmm. um, so not to get all, serious on everyone but i no, think that's great. it's something that should be said i think everyone should take a look and kind of open themselves up and say hey these are things i need to improve on and um so that's kind of some things that i've been doing so yeah i think thanks that's, Nick, for saying that i need yeah. to hear that <laughs> um cool great question alex um another question we got is what are your favorite disease slash outbreak themed movies uh, I'm going to let you go first, Nick. Um, the two that immediately come to mind are 28 Days Later and Resident Evil. Mm. Um, you could probably argue that 28 Days Later is a zombie movie, but it's not. It's a disease. Uh, like the whole premise of the movie is a disease thing. And so is Resident Evil. Um, they're both like considered probably by a lot of people as zombie movies, but they're not. Um, and just 28 Days Later was like one of the first like zombie type, like outbreak movies that I'd seen that I was like, wow, this is crazy. Um, and so not to take away from what's going on in the world, but, you know, obviously watching movies and, you know, watching media is going to be a big part of what everyone's doing for mm -hmm. the time being while they're stuck at home. And, you know, those are two like classics of like what happens when these things happen. So yeah, those are both immediately come to mind. Yeah. For me, it's like I Am Legend, um, which, yeah, all I think about was like kind of zombie-esque movies, which typically zombie movies are disease-based. And I Am Legend is it's not a zombie movie, but and, – and like I thought of Shaun of the Dead, which I can't yes. remember if it was just like Living Dead or if it was kind of like a, 
a disease control kind of gone wrong. I would but, say but, Shaun of the Dead is a zombie movie, but is is I considered putting it on my list. It's such a good movie. Yeah, but I, like, there's not really many movies that are kind of like just like kind of like a disease related. Where like, I mean, usually most disease movies are like zombie movies. I was trying to think of like if there Contagion was like a, is a is another one. <laughs> Um, there's a movie on Netflix called Outbreak, which is pretty uh, well known. Um, Contagion and Out uh, Outbreak are like disease movies that are not zombie related. Yeah. So those are I haven't seen either of them, but mm-hmm. those are both mm-hmm. ones that I'll probably watch um, since I have the time. Yeah, dude, there's so much time. I think I'm gonna watch Pulp Fiction today with the roommates. I've actually nice. never seen it, and then. Ooh. Yikes. It's been on my list for like five years, but I've been like wanting to watch it with someone who is kind of like a movie buff. And now that Tom's living with us, he's like, hey, we should watch that. I'm like, yes, yeah, it's, it's been on my list for a while. Do you I'm have excited anything? to hear what your thoughts are about that. Yeah. Do you have anything that you're excited to kind of watch or listen to? Or, um, So, uh, shoot, what is it? Um, well, I talked about this on one of the other episodes was castlevania and i haven't Mm. gotten any further into it so i really want to get back into watching that um but ozark season three just came out which is a fantastic tv show um so i'll definitely be watching that uh community i don't i don't know if you ever seen the tv show community but it just it just came out on netflix we have been watching it on hulu but now i can watch it without ads and community is one of the best tv shows i've ever seen um obviously if you haven't seen the tiger king documentary then you are behind (laughs) the times um what's up all you cool cats and kittens Uh, (laughs) that is such a good documentary and absolutely ridiculous can't wait to see if they do a follow-up on that um but yeah those are just some of the things I, I'm probably going to keep just keep on playing more Animal Crossing. Dude, um, yeah. Now's the time to game. Yeah. So I've been listening to a lot of music, mainly like now that I can listen to music audibly without having headphones on, I just like play music all day at work while I'm working. Nice. Been listening to a lot of new stuff. Yeah. Which I I've found, been I discovered to. that I really, really enjoy working remotely and could probably do that for the rest of my life if I had the option. Man, man, just be but, an entrepreneur and then you're working yeah. whenever you want to. It's great. We'll get there one day. One day. Um, but yeah, very, very cool. What else you got, Sam? Any closing thoughts? Uh, not really. Um, yeah, just kind of trying to stay busy and active during COVID-19. And yeah, I feel like I'm enjoying kind of doing this video conference stuff. And I'm excited to kind of see how we maybe do some more video with the podcast yeah. and uh, please check us out. Uh, feel free to look at us on Stitcher or SoundCloud or Spotify. And you can now check us out hopefully on YouTube fingers crossed, but <laughs> this should, this should be on YouTube in the next couple of days. And huge, you know, huge. Thank you to Adam for the music. Yeah, thank um, you so much. Thanks buddy. Really, really great. Um, tweet at us, uh, at BBB, Nick and Sam, uh, any questions or uh, things you want us to talk about on the podcast. We'd love to hear it. Um, Yeah. Happy to be here. Glad we got this done and hopefully we'll be doing another one soon. Yeah. Thanks so much guys. And thank you, Nick. All right. See you guys next time. Peace.